This is cozy, huh? song called Biscuits and Honey. Uh, check, check, check. One, two.
So we'll try and uh, make sure you guys can hear everything that we're doing up here, although you aren't going to miss a whole lot that we do, I don't think. <laughs> it's pretty, pretty intimate. Um, so that first song was written by Will Strong, and I think we're going to do another song by him as well. He's originally from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, but uh, grew up in Chicago and has kind of lived all over the country. Everywhere that we go, he has lots of friends and family. So um, he's going to sing you another beautiful song here about the place that we all first played music together called Black Mountain Night. Make him welcome, Mr. Will Strong. Yeah, this is, um, I was talking at our show last night up in Williamstown, and there's a lot of similarities to this y'all's beautiful part of the country and where we live in North Carolina. And um, this song was inspired partly by just um, the good feeling of meeting John and Natalia down in, um, in Black Mountain. And then also, like, you know, when it's snowy out and you kind of look down on a little town or something like that, and uh, Black Mountain's a really pretty quaint little town, like there are many of around here. So, um, yeah, it's called Black Mountain Night.
everybody warm enough? Good. <laughs> We're so pleased to be here and um, in what? West Waitley. West Waitley. <laughs> Thank y'all so much for coming and sitting in this in this wonderful historical building and uh, we're, it's like we're all sitting in a sauna together. It's real fun. <laughs> but it really uh, means a lot to us. I hope you guys are, are going to enjoy the program and um, let me get this guitar in tune real quick. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll go ahead and introduce the hometown hero. Um, we're going to feature her on this uh, next song. And uh, I guess like kind of anywhere in within two hours of Amherst, you can be a hometown hero if that's where you're from or Leverett. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Natalia is a really special friend of mine and a pretty special friend of John's. They're married, so. Uh, yeah, it's been a real pleasure to, uh, to get to play music with her and see her grow as a musician and songwriter and singer. Um, and uh, yeah, the, also to introduce us to this beautiful part of the country and to um, all, of her, all the family and friends. And um, we're starting to feel big attachment up here. So thank you, Natalia, for that. And, um, She's a wonderful fiddle player. She plays old time, bluegrass, classical, whatever you want. So if you've got a wedding coming up, give her a call. <laughs> she might call one of us and we might <laughs> make a little spending money. So. <laughs> From Leverett, Amherst, Massachusetts, Natalia Weinstein. <laughs> fiddle player so this one this one's for you Paul thanks for hosting us tonight this is a little old time tune called uh, Josio <laughs> Back here, and so we're playing. I know some folks have maybe seen us 
all three times and we're trying to play some new songs and some, some old favorites off of our first two records. Um, we put out a new record, our latest record last summer. It's titled Beauty Will Come. So we're playing, we're going to play some songs off of that um, and then we're also going to try some new songs out for you. We're hoping to make a new record hopefully by the end of this year. So we are um, going to do a new one right now for you. And I'll go ahead and introduce him. Um, this next song was written by my husband, Mr. John Cloyd Miller from Hickory, North Carolina. And he's um, a great multi-instrumentalist, kind of all self-taught. Um, you know, grew up listening to music from his grandfather, who's a wonderful bluegrass fiddle player. We might tell about him a little bit later. Um, and just the most soulful singer uh, that I've ever met. So um, I hope that you enjoy this song. It's uh, Please make him welcome, Mr. John Cloyd Miller. Thanks, folks. This is, uh, like she said, kind of a newer song. It's sort of, uh, sort of a can you hear me now? I'm really bad about not speaking into the That's microphone. That's the only speaker I can hear you really well. Can you hear me? <laughs> All right. I don't. It's kind of a rockier song. I'm trying to kind of uh, experiment with writing uh, different kinds of stuff. So anyway, this doesn't really have a title, but we've been calling it The Light of Day. So we'll give it a shot here. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, man. 
<laughs> new songs and all that stuff. We're gonna do one off the yeah in laws new songs. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, is this what my daughter's doing now? Is this what <laughs> no, no, it's all wonderful. What happened to all those years of classical training? Yeah, what happened to all that classical music training we paid for? Uh, she can still do it. We just played a wedding the other day and played all classical. Now we're gonna do a song that Natalia wrote, a lovely song that's on our uh, current album, and. Um, yeah, we're real proud of her, um, you know, delving into some songwriting some. She de hasn't really done it too much, and um, she really um, does a great job when she sets her mind to it. So uh, we'll do this beautiful number here. I dedicated this song on the record to um, my 95-year-old grandmother who lives in the valley. I went and saw her today for a little bit. But um, she's, she's doing pretty good for being 95. <laughs> Acapella number that John and Natalia wrote uh, about a year ago. It's kind of making a weird noise. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to sing it from over here. Is that 
yeah, this is just an absolutely stunningly beautiful song, and we turned it into a three-part harmony. Um, John and Natalia. John lost a family member, a really wonderful uncle, um, who's a who's a great musician, and uh, <clears throat> so they went to the the service, and uh, I think on the way home came up with these beautiful words, kind of to uh, commemorate it. John, what did you call it yesterday? Something you said it was. Uh, First you said like mournful, but then you changed it to reverent. Reverent. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, anyways, it's called I Am Free. Babadoo. Yeah. Can you guys hear okay? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> sort of. If you sit right here next to the speaker, you can hear really well. <laughs> <laughs> At least I can hear really well over here. Me? Yeah. I'm great. You don't want the band? I'm from the south. <laughs> I mean, I'm already wet, so. <laughs> I, w I was fighting it at first, I have to say, but now I'm oh, totally yeah. embracing it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. All right, this is called I Am Free. <laughs> I am free from earthly burdens. I am free from suffering and sin. Free to hear the angels sing and invite me to come in. And invite me to come. Rejoice in what I've given. Hear the sound of Chenonida's band. Trust in the Savior's plan. We can never know His hand. We can never This has been definitely one of the most popular songs on the record. It's, as we say, it's our YouTube hit. It has, has the most hits on YouTube of our songs. <laughs> we can call it a YouTube hit, right? So, um, and uh, we just kind of get requests for it everywhere that we play. And um, it was recently in included in a compilation um, down in Nashville. There's a program, a radio program called Music City Roots. And um, we played on it last year, and we're going to actually go back in a couple weeks and play on it again. And they just released kind of a live compilation record of um, Roots music, and this was included on it. So it was a big, big honor, written by Will Strawn here. It's a beautiful song called Soul's Repair. <coughs> right? Doing Number some three? Dobro repair right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, does any, last night I was scolded by this really sweet woman after the show. She's like, what is that thing you're playing? Um, <laughs> You need to educate the audience, and it seemed like everybody um, knew. And I, you know, I tend to babble, so I didn't want to um, 
explain it, but this is a resonator guitar. Um, <laughs> some people call it a dobro, kind of like you call Kleenex or tissue Kleenex or <laughs> soda coat. That's a good analogy. <laughs> Play it with this slide and you just slide it. So, any questions? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. It's used to the mountain air, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you guys hanging in there? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. We're getting very close to the watermelon. <laughs> yeah, I know that's why y'all came. Just a few more songs till the watermelon. Let's see if you're sharp. I'll just my And I'm going to, just to drum up some excitement, I'm going to tell you about a uh, special guest that we're going to have. <laughs> Did you like that? that? <laughs> Ashley, I love Ashley. She's been friends with me for a very long time, and she laughs at anything I say. I love it. Because <laughs> I'm not a very funny person. But anyways, we're going to, uh, you know, I, I, my dad is very funny, and, uh, and I kind of always wish that I had gotten more of his humor, but I think I got more of my mom's seriousness. <laughs> seriousness in a good way. You talk about very meaningful things. But. <laughs> Putting her foot in her mouth again. <laughs> anyway, we are going to have a special guest joining us very shortly. <laughs> cool, here we go. I slid my dick. Okay, All right, here we go. <laughs> the sun comes up a little south in the wintertime. Must be a heavy load yonder for the long, hard climb. I like the old store signs, and the people are fair. Nothing like a Midwest winter for a soul's repair. I've been waiting for so long, and I know exactly what I'm doing. Now that the wind's died down, the rain makes it all clear. I'm in need of some relief. I'm in need of some relief. I'm in need of some Coming out of the blue 
Starting over feels so new I've been waiting for so long And I know exactly what I'm doing here Now that the winds die down and the rain makes it all Trying to think of like a funny excuse as to why I'm out of tune, but I can't. Like, <laughs> Take me a minute. 120% humid. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna do one more here and uh, have our good friend come up and play a little uh, five string banjo, so uh, get ready for that. <laughs> by a lot of the great sort of instrumental albums. Um, they, any Bela Fleck fans in the audience? Yeah. I was just, we were playing in Williamstown last night and I was remembering going out to Mass Mocha for an Edgar Meyer and, and Bela Fleck concert that was fabulous. Maybe about 10 or 12 years ago and um, just really liked that instrumental music. It was kind of a cool crossover from classical kind of through jazz into sort of bluegrass and in between. So um, this next song that we're going to play is a it's a fiddle tune that I wrote, sort of inspired by um, that style of music. You gonna kill us this way? No, no, I love you guys very much all the time. We would like to get in tune. Good, I appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> Luckily we're playing two songs in the same key here. Never yeah. That's good.
Laura Schwellenbach. <laughs> So we, um, we know Garth from, from or at least, well, John knows Garth from Utah. They go way back. They lived in Salt Lake City together and um, formed a bluegrass band out there called Lo-Fi Breakdown. And uh, they all ended up moving to Asheville um, maybe about nine years ago and about the time that Will and I also moved to the area. And um, then I ended up joining the band when their fiddle player moved back to Utah and had the honor of, of getting to play with them for a couple of years. And um, Garth's Garth's been a great friend and a great banjo player. Now he's here in Amherst, and he's an architect now. So he's, he's, he's moved to the big bucks. <laughs> He'll get sweaty real quick. This is reminding me of a gig we once had. You guys might remember this. What was it? Where, uh, I think it was the Vassar Memorial gig. Where but that the was band, when you were so cold. Before us, the band leader of the band before us was literally wearing a down jacket. During the whole set. It was so cold. It was like the opposite. Yeah. I told Garth he wasn't sweaty enough to be in this band yet. Uh, you want to? No, thanks. Alright, this is a song that um we're gonna do a, uh, a song that I was written by my grandfather, Jim Shoemate. Um, it's a sort of a fiddle number, but it's got words as well, and it's um it's kind of a fun little um, little bluegrassy song called Buckle Up the Backstrap. Um yeah. Somebody asked him one time, uh, what is a backstrap? And he said, well, I, I don't know, uh, but, a, but a belly strap goes around a horse. <laughs> so, so there you go. That's it. <laughs> These guys show up into town, and it's a pleasure to come play with them. They, they usually tell me what songs we're playing about 10 minutes before. Before we, before we start. I'm lucky I've played it in the last five years. Yeah. <laughs> Unlike this one, which I don't think I have. Yeah. <laughs> I think the last time we played this song, we were probably in a different band yeah. or something. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. And, and if we're lucky, we run through it once, which we which didn't we? for this one. So. It's very unlucky, folks. So. All right. Ready? Yeah. One, two, one.
grandfather's style is the real greasy kind of loose bluesy style which has been really hard for me to learn coming from a classical background where everything is very precise and the pitches are right on and so it's been really good for me to kind of work on greasing up the song so that's been a fun one to work on but um we're gonna do one more and then we're gonna go outside <coughs> but um, have a watermelon and we also have some cds available in the foyer um we've got an email list if you want to keep up with us keep up on the progress of our next recording project we've got some a few free stickers left but they're not very many um but we're going to take it out here with a good old bluegrass song about a train <laughs> Let's give a hand to uh, Paul and Claudia for this wonderful evening. <laughs> They had us over for cook dinner for us and made us feel welcome in their home. And their son, Joe, is actually going to be going to school um, right down the road from us at Warren Wilson um, in Swannanoa, North Carolina. So that's really cool. I think you actually said that in your introduction, so excuse me. And thanks to Doug back there. He's filming the show tonight, so everybody look good. <laughs> <laughs> and his uh, assistant over here, uh, Matt. So thank you, guys. Uh, all right. I th we're going to try this one. Uh, uh, yeah. This is, uh, this is a good one called My Dixie Home. One, two, three. Never Been to Heaven, I wrote it after I saw a movie called Magnolia, 
and it's a really, it's a really great movie. Um, for some reason, it struck me extra hard when I saw it. But like four or five different stories going on, and each each character is kind of going through a really difficult time, and they uh, everything gets better by the end, but it's pretty pretty grueling. And so I was sitting on my front porch, and the wind started blowing, um, and I thought that would be kind of a cool song if the wind would blow everything away that was kind of troublesome. So it's called Never Been Heaven. It'll be kind of fun to try this uh, this uh, tuna root. Uh, about uh, you know, good cliche bluegrass themes like heartache and stuff like that. <laughs> 
All bluegrass songs are either about God, mother, or heartbreak. <laughs> <laughs> I missed it. Huh? Did you say that? Yeah, I said all bluegrass songs are either God, mother, or heartbreak. Yeah. That's pretty fair. Yeah, right. <laughs> you want to try this? Sure, yeah. yeah, we were just trying to remember the words. Okay. <laughs> we weren't whispering about you, we were just trying to remember the words of the chorus. <laughs> You guys are cool with this, right? <laughs> we can teach you the words too, we can all sing along. Yeah, this is a song called The Pain of It All. One, two, three. just called Bluegrass. <laughs> On the set list, anyway. On the set list. Yeah, that's cool little, um, we don't do too many medleys, but we're getting ready to do them. Are y'all ready for a medley? Yeah. What are the two songs, John? <laughs> Patty on the Turnpike and Kentucky Mandolin. 
But they sound very much alike, so you'll be lucky if you can hear when they switch. But whoever can tell when they switch. Raise your hand when they switch. Sticker. Yes. You get a free sticker if you can. I'll give you a hint. It changes from a major chord to a minor chord. <laughs> yeah, the first song is a traditional uh, kind of old time fiddle tune that made its way into the bluegrass repertoire. And, uh, Bill Monroe wrote the second one, and it's basically, in a lot of ways, the same song, but um, just using a G minor instead of a G major. So, um, I don't know, it's kind of fun, and uh, I don't know if you guys are up for all this bluegrass tonight, but uh, okay, so it's kind of fun for us. All right there, fiddler. sort of later Bill Monroe style of Manlin where it's very rhythmic and you're not doing it's mostly just like you that don't sounds have to play very many notes. You don't have to play a lot of notes, which I can't do. So. <laughs> but I really love the rhythmic aspect of that. It's really fun. So uh, Natalia is a wonderful bluegrass fiddler in addition to uh, I was trying out some Jim Shoemate licks on that one. <laughs> that high one is a, is a Jim Shoemate original lick. Yeah. Well that's fun for us to play. We haven't done that in a while. I think we're gonna do a um, a newer one that Will wrote. Um, this is a, you can probably tell this story better than I can. We were coming back from a show in Atlanta and he uh, 
No, this is a different show, the song. No, that's it. Oh, this is that song? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think this song appeared to him on a uh, long, sleepless drive back uh, to Nashville. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, uh, I never tell this, because this is the best part of the song, really, um, is that I actually woke up after that three in the morning arrival, I woke up the next morning, um, and I was thinking, like, how, you know, I'm at this phase in my life, I'm kind of, you know, getting old and a musician, but I stopped and looked around and sort of thought, like, how, how many of my friends were doing pretty good, those who had chosen their own kind of career paths, um, music or, or whatever, and I sort of looked around, I was like, man, everybody's kind of stuck with it and seeing some success, and I was thinking in particular of John and Natalia, who each in their individual music careers and as a couple and as my bandmates, like, have continued to get stronger, and I was like, "That's a really good feeling." So some of the, um, some of the, and that made that kind of lifted me up because I was uh, maybe not that lifted up <laughs> at the time. <laughs> so there's a little reference to that in the song. It's called um, "Ancient Dreams." One, two, three, four. Thank <laughs> you. 
Um, and he, he was saying, you know, I was one. I didn't know what to write a song about, but I was thinking about things you like, and I like nature a lot. So the song is about a tree talking to a flower um, that has not yet emerged yet from the ground. So he's an anthropomorphized this tree. You can, can, can move it around if you want it to be about people too. That's giving too much away. I'm gonna let the song speak for itself. So the song is called "I Still Wait." Just like I'm waiting very patiently right now. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it can be dead air, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, this is a really wonderful song. And we've actually had a really, um, we're kind of in that phase where we're starting to think about our new CD, really far, even farther along. We're, I think we're going to go make a new record in December. And um, if you guys haven't or if you're interested, if you want to do it on your way out the door when you get home, um, check out the website. You can sign up on our email list. We send like one newsletter out a month, and um, we will be doing pre-orders for the CD, which is a great way for us to um, try and raise a little bit of money to help pay for it. And you guys get a copy of the CD um, in advance before other people do. So um, we're really excited about that. So if you're interested, sign up when you get home, or you can sign the list there. And we'll, one email a month. We don't we don't pester you too much. Um, you done done, done John? <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, we're actually really thrilled. We all, all of our CDs so far, have, um, we've, we've done through sort of benefit concerts um, and people being really generous. So, and, and these kind of shows too, where we really get to reach people. So this is wonderful. All right. My guitar doesn't like the key of G. It likes every other every other key, but it doesn't like G. It's, it's touchy. They don't care though. <laughs> <laughs> Day eight of the tour. <laughs> I said that with love. Yes. We all still love each other. We're, we're still a band after this, after this night. Okay. All right.
kind of been a really, really fun spring. Um, we kind of we're taking a little bit of a breather after we released our CD and toured it all summer and fall, spring, summer and fall last year, and um, we didn't, you know, we just were kind of chilling out. We didn't do a ton of festivals or anything this spring, but thankfully, um, this is brag on John, um, kind of kind of month and tour. He um, he entered the songwriting contest. Is anybody familiar with Merle Fest? Doc Watson. Doc's um, son, Merle, died 20, about 26 or 27 years ago, and they started a bluegrass festival in Wilkesboro, North Carolina. And um, it's really one of the most outstanding festivals in the world. We were fortunate enough to play it um, at Doc's last festival um, before he passed away two years ago, the 25th anniversary. Um, and we um, were invited back this year, thanks to John. He entered the uh, Chris Austin Songwriting Contest, and he entered this new song of his, which thankfully for married couples and wives, um, Natalia was like, that's great, but you need to enter another song into the bluegrass category. And he did. He wrote this really cool song about the Dust Bowl. There, we've got a video of it. You can see it on our website. And uh, he placed. He was a finalist in the songwriting contest. And I went down and watched them perform um, for the like final three. I was really nerve-wracking. But <laughs> long story, short story long, John won the songwriting contest. <laughs> Cool. It really shows John versatility. He and I write a lot of ways, in some ways similar, but he's able to say, I want to write a song in B that's a bluegrass song and has a little bit of a contemporary feel. Bam! And then comes up with this song. So um, it's called Cloud of Dust. Will lets me use his guitar. It feels like it cooled off to me. Did it? I'm only sweating like. Half as much as I was. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, one we cut on our on our newest CD. So uh, yeah, one, two, one. <laughs>
funny story about that song because I was thinking about it while we were singing it. Um, Will has three really sweet little nieces that live in Nashville, and um, I guess they have the, the CD on rotation in the car, or not on rotation, and repeat on the, in the car. And, uh, and his little five-year-old niece was like, I love that song. What, what did she say? She goes, She's, she's like, yeah, I love that song, um, Carried Away on a Big Old Platypus. <laughs> what is a platypus? Yeah. With a platypus. Yeah, so every time that I sing that song, I'm singing, Carried Away on a Big Old Platypus. So, so fun, yeah. So awesome. Anyways. So now when you're singing along with your record, you can sing Yeah, you can sing that. <laughs> Are we trying this? Yeah. Are you willing to try? I'm willing to try. Yes, we had a uh, <laughs> request. We were going to do a different acapella number, but I think we're going to do the one on the... Can you hear me? I'm sorry. That's better. I think we're going to do an acapella number that's on our uh, CD. It's, uh, we had a request to do this one tonight, so um, we'll give this a shot. <clears throat> My voice holds up. <laughs> uh, it's a wonderful um, number. I, I like to find old... Um, you know, I, I really like uh, Southwest Virginia style, kind of primitive Baptist style singing, and um, I got this uh, this uh, song off an old Ralph Stanley record that's out of print now, and um, it's a it's a great old number called "I'm Willing to Try." So we'll give it a shot here for you. <coughs> be able to preach like Paul. I may not be able to walk on the water like Peter, but I'm willing to try. No, I may not be able to walk like him. I may not be able to talk like him. I may not be able to preach like Be able to talk like him, but I'm willing to try. I may not have the obedience of Abraham's sacrifice. I may not be able to stand so tall. I may not have the endurance of Moses in the wilderness, but I'm willing. Be that good and faithful servant. I may not be able to feel the call. I may not be able to pray like old Daniel in the lion's den. But I'm willing to try. No, oh, I may not be able to walk. Like him. I may not be able to talk like him. I may not be able to preach like Paul. I may not be able to walk like him. I may not be able to talk like him. But I'm willing to try.
enduring the heat and spending your evening here with us. We've been having a really fun time. And um, yeah, just uh, we hope to see you again down the road. And, and take a souvenir if, if you want with you, a little square one. <laughs> yes, yes. We do have CDs for sale back there. We'd, we'd love for you guys to take one home if you don't have one. And uh, some really great stuff on there. Key of G, Garth. <laughs> people's Key. Yeah, People's Key. I think, uh, yeah, this will be a fun one. We haven't done this one uh, on this tour yet. So uh, it's, a, it's an old Carter family number. We used to do this song. It's a, it's a really fun song you'll probably recognize. We are singing. Yes. Thanks again so much for having us. Yeah, thank you all so much. Thank you, Paul and Claudia. We really appreciate you guys. <laughs> okay. One, two, three.
And mom was like, why don't you play guitar? Yeah. Let's do let's let's stay in the bluegrassy vein. A? Not too fast. Not as fast as that last. Yeah. <laughs> it's so much fun getting to play with Garth. Um, you know, Garth and Garth and I were in the band for many years together. Uh, this band called Lo-Fi Breakdown, which actually I think we have a few CDs uh, back yeah. there. Limited uh, editions. But. Yeah, I think we actually do. Yeah, limited edition. It's very, very out of print. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> not through any fault of Garth. Though. And maybe, maybe we'll give Garth a dollar off the CD sales tonight. We, we <laughs> might give him half a half a penny or something. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's about two hundred. Oh, good. <laughs> well, it's an addition, Garth. Just keep it on the DL. But it's real fun to get to play with him, and we don't ever get to do it unless we're up this way. So um, if you guys are okay with us keeping it in the bluegrass vein. We'll do one more here. I think we'll do a Stanley Brothers number um, that uh, it's kind of a good sing-along. You guys can all figure this out. Um, it's, uh, it's called Heaven's Light is Shining on Me, and um, it repeats that a lot, so you can figure it out and sing along. <laughs> Thanks so much for your great singing.